Welcome to another edition of NetStruck Talks. I have a guest who helps young men increase their self-esteem, build out their success, all through mentoring and coaching initiative that's actually run by a single mom raising her son. Stay tuned. Welcome, it's Sharon Devonish Lead again, and welcome to Netstruck Talks. And I have a, an amazing young woman here with me as my guest, talking to us about her program and how she decided to become a coach, a single mom's coach, which is really exciting. And you know, I know everybody is going to be interested in learning, you know, what you have been doing. You're working with young men. You're a single mom. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Nija Howard, the single mom coach. Welcome, Nija. Thank you, Sharon, so much for having me on Nestra Talks. Love Thank it. Thank you so much for coming on. <laughs> so I want to get down to it. And I always do this. I always say I want to get down to it because I have such amazing guests. Yes. But when we met, we met at a time that you had launched your first book, you were, um, you know, you kind of put things on hold for a while and you decided that this was a time for you to start shining. This was your time. Your son, you, you raised your son. Yes. He is a young, great young man. And it was time for you now to shine and do what you needed to do to get the word out and show other moms and show other people the struggle that you went through, as well as now the success. So Absolutely. talk to us a little bit about your 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 journey. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for having me again. Um, it's been quite a journey, like you said. And you're right. When I first came out with the book, it was really about, um, my passion was really about educating moms, providing a sense of support, a sense of advocacy, and practical guides that I myself had endured as a single mother. But I realized in the process, raising my son, I still needed to invest more time into him. So I needed to take a little bit of a break. But once I realized he was off to college, life was good, he was doing his thing, it was time for me to really branch out and flourish and really expose the world to what I've been doing for over 20 years, helping young men and their mothers to build self-esteem and competency. And really it's all about um, helping them realize that um, you are more than enough, even when society uh, or your internal negative thoughts and thinking starts to tell you that you're not qualified to raise a, a, a young man. Uh, we're living in a society now where uh, the world says only a man can raise a man or women cannot raise men. Those are the two big next stereotypes that I am really pushing to get past. We must be able to uh, empower our mothers to know that they have all the tools necessary to raise successful young men on their own. <clears throat> However, you may need the proper guidance, the proper support, the village, and that is what I'm able to provide my mothers. So it's, so it's important that you said village. Um, you know, a lot of women become that single mom. A lot of women are by themselves. They don't have the support. Um, what you went through, and by the way, you know, the name of your book is Raising John's Boy. And when we were going around, we were talking to people about it. Your journey resonated with a lot of women, yes. a lot of women that was angry, a lot of women that did not want to forgive, a lot of women that kind of took it out on their sons because it reminded them of their father. And in your book and in your talks and in your journey, you're actually giving them that support and those tools and how to actually get a grip on your life and not do a blaming game, but actually start love, self-loving yourself and showing love to your son because your son is not the, he's not the issue. That's right. And, and, and okay, fine. You know, you two came together to unite. You made a beautiful son, beautiful children. Now what? Okay, right. it didn't work out. With your tools, you had 
a support team. You had the sister girl. You had the family. What do you do for the moms who actually doesn't have that? Like, how do you work with them with that? It's so important. This is why networking and building relationships is so, so valuable. But the reason why I established Young Men Strong, my organization, is because one of the things as a single mom I realized, finding role models, positive, successful, um, effective role models, male role models in the community was one of my biggest challenges. I mm -hmm. realized that um, as a young man, men do need men, but you don't want just any man. You want men that are qualified. You want men who have something to offer your son. You want men that, that have goals and ambitions that are striving, but you also want men who are going to elevate you and shine your the light on you and the work that you're doing to raise him to be a successful man. And that's what Young Men Strong does. I bring professional men in the community together to help as a guide, an assistant, a support system to lift up our mothers who are raising these sons on their own. Now you mentioned in just now that it was a it, it was really difficult for you to find strong positive men to work with you in this program in the beginning. Um, I know now that things are working much better. You're now getting a much more traction, better traction. What yes. did you have to do to try to get other men to, to buy into your program? Because you got to think about it. You're a, a black single mom talking about mentoring and coaching young black men. Yes. And, you know, I can see some men being like, wait a minute, hold up. How is it that you feel that you are in that position to do that. You know, what 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 did you have to do to get the buy-in? First of all, let I like to think like to keep it a hundred, right? I like to keep it a hundred hundred, right? First of all, I can give birth to a man. And I also know what I'm looking for in a man. Mm -hmm. Okay. Therefore, I encourage my moms and my women go out there with confidence, knowing that you have all of it. You know what you're looking for in a man. So whenever I'm looking for men, I'm looking for men who I know were raised by women with good foundation, good morals, good integrity, loyal, men who understand that uh, raising up a woman does not deplete their manhood, men that understand that um, lifting up a son requires two strong individuals, not just one. Mm. And so in order to do that, um, it's important that you connect with men who are not afraid of women with some kind of power to be able to speak um, and stand um, af with affirmity and saying, hey, I raised my son. I did a hell of a job and I'm raising uh, I'm helping other women to do the same with their sons. Um, right. So it, it requires a sense of knowing who you are in this game. Um, and I've been doing this for quite some time. So it takes nothing out of me to speak to. Um, grown men. I speak to grown men all the time. Most of my direct, my board is men. So, um, so I'm always helping men to see a little bit bigger because there's a lot of programs out there and you're absolutely right. Where men will look at me and say, well, who are you? You know, you're a woman. How could you possibly raise, you know, a man? Well, you know, listen, like I said, in raising John's boy, um, I don't have to bench press 250 pounds. I don't mm -hmm. have to um, stand in front of a commode in order to find myself as qualified to raise a man. What I'm looking for in a man is men who are dedicated, men who are loyal, men who have integrity, men who are moral, who have moral values. These are the things that women are looking for in a man. And so therefore, these are the kind of tools that we want to make sure our sons have, along with accountability. You want to make sure they take responsibility for what it is that they're doing and how they think and how they feel and how they behave when they walk out of your home. That's amazing. That that that's so amazing. And so for the moms, the single moms, I know that you had to get some training. You had to get some coaching, you know, because again, when we met, you were not the single mom coach. You yeah. were the author, Nyjah Howard, the author <laughs> of Raising John's Boy. And during your journey, you decided to invest more into yourself yes. and become a coach. Yes. What what drove you to that? 
What put you in that position? Because I know when you become an author, you're already considered an expert. Yes. What drove you to that point to say, you know what, I need to pour more into myself? Well, for one, I, I wanted to be able to put the credibility behind my authenticity. I have a story um, and, and people see the glory, but they don't know the story. So behind the story, I wanted to make sure I added the credibility. I wanted to make sure that I gave my audience, my mothers, an opportunity to see that they were speaking to someone that didn't just walk the walk or talk the talk, but I did the work that was required in order to back up my walk and my talk. And so um, I am the only one um, that I know of across the country that is called that has self-proclaimed herself as the single mom's coach. And I am proud to have that title because I want mothers who are raising sons by themselves to realize that you are enough and your son can and will become a successful man, even if a man is not in a home. Now, let me be very clear about this because a lot of people will give a lot of, um, they just don't understand. So let me expand that a little bit more. A lot of people think that because you're a single mom's coach, it must mean that you're putting men down or you don't, you devalue men or men are out of the picture. A lot of single women who are raising sons did not become a single parent by choice. That's okay? true. They did not become a single parent because they just decided they wanted to raise a child by themselves. But we have to champion our mothers and we have to know that 86% of the women across this country are raising their children solo. And if they're being raised by themselves, that means we have to provide and pour into our mothers the tools, the practical guidance, the support and the advocacy that they need to be able to raise sons to be the men that they themselves wish that they had. So it's important to do that. And, and, um, and I believe that um, part of the, the tools that I provide are practical. Um, they are realistic. They're authentic. And I come to the table um, you know, bearing my authenticity. Not only am I, um, you know, the president, but I'm also a client. <laughs> I've been <Right>. there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And that plays a key point. Um, you know, you not only are the president, you're the founder, but you lived this journey. You lived the the nightmare, the yes. going from hell and back. I mean, I, re I remember your story. Like your yeah. story is amazing. And, you know, for you to say to yourself, my story is not enough. I need to go and invest and become credible. That that tell, that says a lot. Yes. That says a lot because a lot of people do not do that. They just say, you know what? My experience and my story and I can help you and I can do this. But you went and you took it a step further. So kudos to you. Congratulations to you for you. pouring into yourself so you can pour more into the women that you're looking to help. Absolutely. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Sharon. No problem. No problem. So I know also in terms of that you also have started your, you had relaunched your magazine, Thoughts Magazine. Yes. Talk, to, talk, talk a little bit in terms of the, the history behind Thoughts Magazine. So, you know, Thoughts is, is interesting because you know, um, it, it really founded um, in 2012 at the murder of Trayvon Martin. That was really the, uh, the straw that broke the camel's back for me and really made me say, okay, we got to do something to help our young boys and men of color realize just how valuable and needed and wanted they are in the home. Everything that I do is surrounded around uplifting men of color everything that I do. In order to uplift our men of color, we must uplift the mothers who are raising them, right? But we also must uplift the young men who are growing up in those single parent households who are saying, hey, I only see, um, you know, a woman, right? And so it is important that they see male role models that look like them in their community that are touchable and reachable, that are saying, hey, this is my story. I may have come from, you know, a poverty. I may have been incarcerated. I may have dropped out of school, but look where I'm at now. I made myself better. This is who I am. And so what I do with Thoughts Magazine, I get the opportunity, I get the privilege, I get the honor to be able to, like yourself, Sharon, to interview some of the greatest men across this country. Um, we have 
grown from 2012 to where we are now. Now we're in five countries outside of the USA. In wow. addition to that, we are also in the tri-state area. So we're doing significantly well. And, and it's amazing because 10 years ago, men of color didn't even see themselves on the front cover. I had blatant men tell me, um, you know, uh, Thoughts Magazine is not going to be successful because it is highlighting uh, men of color. Um, and so uh, this publication is so amazing because, again, um, I'm a visionary. I'm an imagineer. I'm someone who, um, you know, I, I see where there's void and I fill it. I provide solutions to problems. That's who I am. I'm a, I'm a problem solver. And so when I saw Thoughts Magazine, I prayed about it in my spirit. And I said, God, you know, after the murder of Trayvon, I said, God, please use me. Use my platform. What can I do to let young men know that they're valuable? And so the Lord had placed in my spirit, Create Thoughts Magazine, an essence magazine for men of color. And so um, I got on my computer, reached out to complete strangers, and every stranger that I met uh, was exactly who I needed to bring the first issue to life. Absolutely. No, it's amazing. It, it definitely is amazing. Some of the people that I know that you've had part of Thoughts, <clears throat> the, the, the mayor for New York, Mayor Adams, um, George Frazier, who's the guru of, of networking and generational wealth. I mean, you have some really heavy hitters and then you have the strong, the strong bone of men in the community, businessmen, fathers, um, clergy, like you really are pulling out. And then you have the girl's version to it on the other side. Absolutely. Absolutely. People don't know this, but it's, that's what makes it so unique and so clever is that it's double-sided. And the mm -hmm. whole purpose behind that is because I really want to build effective communication between the men and women. You know, so often our divorce rate in the African-American black and brown community is so significantly high, especially since COVID. We have higher rates of, of divorce. Our single parent household rates are significantly high. It is time to reduce those numbers, but we got to put it into action. And part of that is building communication. We must understand how women think and men must understand and women must understand how men think. And so with Thoughts Magazine, it provides one theme, both concepts, so that when you're sitting in a barbershop or you're sitting at the salon, you can sit there reading it. And once you understand it and you really apply the knowledge and the wisdom that comes from Thoughts magazine. Now you can go home to your husband or your wife and say, I get you. I didn't agree with you before, but now at least I understand where you're coming from. And Thoughts Magazine provides that space for, for both men and women. But I also want to say it also creates space for businesses that are thriving and striving. These are black and brown businesses that are able to collaborate because you're probably wondering how do you stay how do you stay afloat? How do you how are you able to uh, get to the um, the print edition when we're in a social media digital world. Well, you know what? I'm going to be honest with you, Sharon. I am huge on reading. I am huge. And we have got to make reading sexy again. Okay. Say world, that again. <laughs> we have got to make reading sexy again. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, I'm the same way. And not only that, um, I love to sit down with a good book. You know, when people say, oh, I'm going to do the digital one, not knocking people who do that, but I am the old fashioned way. I want to sit down on my couch or sit down outside on my gazebo and I want to curl up with a good book right. or, you know, a nice magazine. And I actually want to hold it and read it, That's put right. it away and put it with my collection. And, you know, this is very important because just like what you mentioned, this is the men's version of Essence. I have the first edition of Essence. Wow. This is something where you literally can put on the pad, on a, on a mantle and say, listen, who has the first edition of Thoughts Magazine? That's right. You know, it's, it's, so it's funny. monumental. It is. It really is. And I, I, I've had so many people um, see me at different speaking engagements or different events. And they'll come up to me and say, I know you from somewhere. I know you. Mm -hmm. And then, and then it'll click and they'll go, wait a minute, I have thoughts magazine. And I've had people stop me and actually say that. And it's, it's heartwarming, right? Because this is just, this was just an idea. This was just something that I, I prayed for, but, um, it was hard as hell to get it 
off the ground and get it to where it needs to be and get and, and I'm still not satisfied. I still have I want to reach the whole globe, but I'm looking mm-hmm. for the globe of readers, people that are excited about opening up a book and marking it, putting it on a coffee table, going back to pick it up. I'm excited about people who know how to crease the paper and go, I'm coming back to you and then you know, pull it and cl- close it back up. Those are the people who I'm targeting when it comes to the print edition of Thoughts Magazine. And although we are digital, it is important that we showcase our young children that we have Black literature in our home. It is por- it's in the library. We Absolutely. have to. I remember, oh, I remember man. George Frazier is one of my uh, menti- mentors. And I'll never forget when I was a little girl growing up, I had success guide. My parents made sure yes. that black <laughs> literature was in my home. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and you're continuing that 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 journey. You're continuing that yes. that that mission of what George Frazier, what Susan Taylor, what yes. you know, what everybody that has created this type of media platform for us to keep us involved, to keep, you know, keep us more knowledgeable about what each of us are doing then you know keep doing it and and whatever we can do at netstruck talks netstruck pr you know just let us know because we're a media platform as well yes. so in terms of working with each other this is how we continue to build you can't build by yourself you you can build by yourself but when you come together you build faster and you build bigger absolutely so with young men's thought and before we close out how is it that folks can that w- are what are you looking for to help continue to grow young men's young men strong well i'll tell you right now we have just uh launched our pilot program for young men between the ages of 16 and 24 and i'm looking to hire some young men who are looking to learn some real information on generating income a really good productive way. Um, We have some great instructors who are teaching them day by day on training them on how to speak to individuals, um, how to conduct themselves, to learn more about how to become members of Young Men Strong. Um, It is about really helping them to generate income. And the way that they're doing that is they're helping to, to build advertisements inside Thoughts Magazine. When they do that, they generate an income. And so again, I want us to start trusting each other. I am encouraging my people to start allowing us, allow us to to support each other. You know, I'm going to encourage my sisters and my brothers who are who are at the sound of my voice right now to ask yourself this question: Am I that black person who doesn't support other black people? Mm. Wow. And people need to really think about that. We really need to think, we need to support each other. And when we don't support each other, and when you come out and do something and you don't get the support, you wonder why. Exactly. I'm always a big, big supporter of, you know, supporting my brothers and sisters um, when I can. And most of the time I can, but sometimes it may not be monetary. It may be volunteer. That's it right. may be a phone call. It may be sharing a post. It, That's right. it could be, you know, supporting can come in so many ways, shapes and forms that it does not necessarily have to mean that we have to put out monetary because, again, we're all working hard. We're all, you know, That's making right. ends meet. But a simple reaching out. Hey, you know what? You got a great program. I'm going to share it on my page. Someone in my network is right. going to need your assistance. And that a new initiative, what you're doing is amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we definitely want to make sure that more people know about this. How is it that folks can get in contact with you? You can reach me on my website, uh, nijahotward.com. That's N-I-J-A-A-H-O-W-A-R-D.com. One word, one H. And so you can reach me there. I'm all over social media as a single mom's coach. You can also reach out to uh, Young Men Strong or Thoughts Magazine. Um, We're out there. And if you uh, really, really want it, you'll really, really find us. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Nyjia, for just pouring into us your journey, the work that you are doing for young men, for single moms, and just, you know, the community, period. Um, Is there any last things that you want to leave us with? Well, you know, my slogan, uh, Sharon, is is always whenever I complete any show or any talk, I must let people understand that when we strengthen our boys and men, we stabilize our girls and women. 
we work together. That's how we make it work. Absolutely. And thank you again. I look forward to having a follow up with you, Nyjah. And, you know, just bringing more and more information. If anyone is interested, again, please make sure that you reach out to Nyjah at her website. You can also follow her on Facebook. If you are interested in Thoughts Magazine, shoot her, a, you know, go to her DM, reach out to her on her Facebook, or on her website. She will be glad to see how you can work with her. Thank you again. And I will see you at the next at the next Netstruck Talks. See awesome. you later. Good night.